Mountains. We love them. We love barreling down them, even though trekking up them is hard work. The mountains have always attracted loads of people for various reasons, such as skiing, hiking, retreating from the busy city life, and more. However, people need a way to get up into the mountains. Some built proper public transportation links to the outside world, and some are Vail, Colorado. In this video, we'll take a look at the transportation systems of mountain ranges, how they work, and how public transportation works well, even in the mountains. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. These are the Rocky Mountains, stretching from Canada all the way throughout the US. Due to the mountain range's length and tall mountains, the Rockies host lots of ski resorts, the most famous probably being Aspen and Vail, Colorado. Even though the slopes are magnificent and beautiful, the way people get there is less than ideal to say the least. To get to Aspen, you have three options. You can drive there, taking Colorado State Highway 82 up the mountains, you can take a bus from a few cities in Colorado, or you can fly to Aspen Pitkin County Airport. One notable mode of transport that is missing is rail. There used to be a train line leading from Glenwood Springs to Aspen, but passenger service was shut down as a consequence of the post-war car boom in 1949. The line still functioned as a freight rail line, until it was completely abandoned in 1969. Because of this, the vast majority of people get to Aspen by road, either by bus or more frequently, by their own cars. Owing to the fact that the road is remote, winding and the weather can be pretty bad sometimes, Highway 82 is one of the most dangerous roads in Colorado. The drivers themselves don't help either. According to the Colorado State Patrol District 4C Captain Jared Rapp, lots of crashes are caused by drivers failing to yield the right of way and by driving too fast. The town of Vail is in a similar situation. It doesn't have an airport directly connecting it to the outside world, but on the other hand, it is served by a proper interstate highway, Interstate 70. The railway predicament of Vail is very similar to Aspen. It used to have a rail line, but passenger service was shut down in 1964, and freight services were stopped in 1997. However, things don't have to be this way. A better way of transporting people into the mountains exists. This is the nation of Slovakia, known for many things, such as Halushki's Brinzo, its political clusterfuck, and most importantly, its mountains. Slovakia is a very mountainous country, with the Vysoké and Nízké Tatry, Malá and Velká Fatra, and Karpaty mountain ranges. Because of those, the country is a hotspot for tourism, with many people going into the mountains for hiking and skiing. Thankfully, the country was forward-looking enough and built a proper railing to the outside world. This is the map of the so-called TEZ, or Tatranské elektrické železnice, or the Tatra Electric Railway in English. The TEZ is a small, separate railway network from the normal Slovak railways. The track gauge of the Tatra Electric Railway is only 1000 mm, compared to the rest of the network, which uses the standard 1435mm European gauge. It consists of two lines, which intersect at the Stary Smokovec transfer station. The first line leads from the city of Popra to Štrbské pleso, a popular natural landmark in the Tatra National Park. The second line leads from the mountain town of Tatranská Lomnica to Stary Smokovec. Once every two hours or so, a direct train runs from the city of Popra to Tatranská Lomnica, mainly serving the tourists that came to the latter town for hiking and or skiing. The main connection to the wider Slovak railway network is at Popra Tatry station, at which passengers can transfer to various services across the country, and even international trains. As someone who went to the Tatras from Prague, I can attest that the experience was smooth and relatively comfortable. I got on a night train in Prague, and I woke up the next morning in Poprad. Then, a simple transfer to the Tatra Electric Railway took me all the way to the mountains. Although I have to say, the beds in the night train really aren't suited for tall people. I am 195cm, or about 6 foot 5, and I had to be quite inventive in folding my legs in just the right way. After I managed that, the ride was decently comfortable. Alternatively, Passengers can travel to the village of Štrba, 
from which they can take the local rack railway to Štrbské pleso. There, they can transfer to the TEG network. The system uses 15 class 425.95 trains, based on a Swiss design. As someone who has been to the Tatras, I can say that these models are good, comfortable trains. They do their job well, transporting people around the Tatra mountains reliably and efficiently. The Tatra Electric Railway has been moving people around the mountains for over 100 years. Construction of the first line started in 1906, and the first train started running in 1908. The railway reached the aforementioned mountain town of Tatranská Lomnica in 1911, and the Štrbské Pleso Lake in 1912. In my opinion, if we manage to build railways into the mountains with 1912 technology, we should absolutely build more of them today, especially considering our modern technological advances. Combined with the TEG, there is one more train line running in the Tatra mountains. This is the Popra Tatry to Studený Potok to Tatranská Lomnica line, which uses diesel trains to serve the aforementioned mountain resort town. Some people may say, but how will I get my ski equipment onto a train? It's usually quite simple. Most train operators, like Amtrak in the US, České Drahy in the Czech Republic and Jusseseke in Slovakia have whole dedicated pages on transporting skis and ski equipment. Transporting the vast majority of ski equipment is easily manageable on trains. The one exception I can think of is transporting snowmobiles, that would probably be a hassle, but other than that, the train can absolutely accommodate all your ski equipment. There are numerous benefits of running public transport to mountain ranges, rather than tunneling through and flattening large strips of land for highways. First, as previously mentioned, railways physically take up less space than roads, which is absolutely useful in the mountains, where usable space is at a premium. Even if there isn't enough usable space, the smaller footprint of railways means that tunnels don't have to be as large, saving money on building costs. Second, Public transport, especially railways, have a much larger passenger capacity than cars. According to the Transformative Urban Mobility Initiative, a 3.5 meter or 11.48 foot wide car lane can transport 1500 to 2000 passengers per hour. In comparison, a similarly sized rail line, depending on the implementation and type, can transport from 18,000 to 90,000 passengers per hour. Third. Electric railways don't pollute the air, and so, they help to preserve the pristine condition of lots of mountains for future generations. I'd argue that even diesel trains are better, because of the fact that their steel wheels don't release microplastics into the environment. This aspect of pollution caused by cars is often overlooked, even though it is no less serious than tailpipe emissions. When a vehicle with rubber tires breaks, the friction with the road surface causes microscopic particles to be released, polluting water, the soil and the air. This is also why electric vehicles aren't really the solution to pollution. Yes, they don't have tailpipe emissions, but they still release microplastics from their tires. In fact, EVs release more microplastics than gas cars because of their increased weight, which increases the friction their tires experience when braking. In conclusion, Public transport is absolutely viable in mountain regions, if done right. Passenger service to the mountains should absolutely come back in various regions, and I hope that more and more people will use transit to take their skiing vacations. Anyway, thank you so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you want to support the channel, check out the links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. If you decide to buy something from them, you will directly support the channel, so that would be greatly appreciated. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Enjoy the bloopers. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! These are the Rocky Mountains, stretching from- uh. The line still functioned as a freight rail line, until- it <sighs> Because of this, the vast majority of people get to Aspen by road, either by bus or more po- According to the Colorado State Patrol District- Why does this man have such a fucking complicated title, like what the fuck? This is the nation of Slovakia, known for many things, such as Halushki's Brinzo, its political cro- Even if there isn't a-